What's up, fellas? Urban Red Pill. You know the slogan, men first. No matter what they say, no matter what they think, who cares? At the end of the day, nothing gets done without the man as the head of everything. Doesn't matter what it is out here. So with that said, men first. Um, today, I want to talk more about solutions. Um, I'm just going to give my take on certain solutions for guys that are going their own way. Um, guys who have chose to not indulge in marriages, relationships, even those guys that are dating. I'm here, you know, we got a lot of problems out here. We do have a lot of problems. Um, feminism is getting worse. Men are losing rights by the hour. And I just don't really think this crazy train is going to stop. It's got a wreck. It's, it's, it's not going to stop. So until then, maybe we need to start, you know, practicing solutions to make peace within our own lives. Because at the end of the day, the government is not going to change any laws to benefit men. The only laws they're going to change are those that benefit women and those that benefit government. Even the abortion situation, the only reason they're doing this is because there is a birth rate decline in the United States and they would rather get rid of abortion and, is, instead of just, you know, doing a whole influx of migrant, migrants. But that's a topic for another story, another time. Now, my thing is this. I like to, when it comes to these women in 2019, or oh, it's been like this for a while. I like to put, what I do is put these bitches on ice. Ice them out. What I mean by that is I, I've i erased every chivalrous movie, any chivalrous thing that my mother has tried to put in, instill in me. Blue pill friend programming. All those things. I pretty much had to dump my hard drive and start from scratch. And... When I started from scratch, I developed a, a sense. I, I developed stoicism. In other words, I ice these bitches out, man. I do not deal with women unless there is of any benefit to me. If there is no benefit to me, I do not indulge and I do not fuck with them. Period. Unless there's a benefit to me. I'm, 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 I'm very, very super selfish with this because guess what? Look, they're selfish about the things that they want. You ever notice their desires and their wants come before yours? So at some point, men need to do a very, very hard pushback on these type of things. And I know some people say, well, men that are going MGTOW, Men that are going ill more, men going their own way, oh, they're just a small niche group, or they won't have any effect on society. And I would have to disagree with that. To me, it all depends on the city you live in and what is the ratio to men and women. In other words, if you live in a city where the ratio of females is five to every one male, absolutely. If one guy decides that he wants to check out, those are five potential mates that he had to choose from. And those five women will not have a male mate to, to, you know, to scam or do whatever the fuck it is they're trying to do. So unless you live in Seattle, where last I checked, the ratio of male to females is very, very high in the woman's favor. In other words, it's more men than women. Yeah, you know, you stay the fuck from over there. But for the most part, most cities... The ratio of men to women, there's more women to each man than there is vice versa. So absolutely, a small niche group of guys who decide that they don't want to play this maiden bullshit game. Um, even the pump and dumpers, those are the ones that are hurt, that, that, are, that, are, that are causing a disruption in the dating scene too. So these are the things that I do to, you know, I'm not worrying about no government no more. They're not going to do shit for us. So these are the things that I do within the, the within the, the realm of my life, right? Dates. I don't go on dates. The days of me taking some chick or this creature out to dinner, those days are over. Those days have been over years ago. 
I do not do fucking dates. Do I eat out? Yes, I do. But I do not eat out as far as like dates, courtship, me trying to get to know a woman, all of this, you know, you know, the stuff in the movies. I don't do that shit anymore. Sometime I will go with some friends of mine, guys. Um, I do ride motorcycles as a hobby. We will, you know, we'll stop and we'll have things to eat. Or if I have a craving for certain a certain dish, I don't have any problem with going there by myself. But I am not wasting my time and my money dating dinners, going out to try to impress some chick that's really sitting there to ask me to see how much money I have in my pocket. I'm not doing that. Loans. I do not loan money out to any female. No, absolutely not whatsoever. Uh, relatives, absolutely nothing. What you have to understand about women, they do not stand on the mental, the, the moral, excuse me, the moral compass of integrity. Some reason, they think if they ask you for a loan, they're going to do whatever it takes to get the money out of your pocket into their hands. Once it's in their hands, they lose all and they don't have any integrity. They believe what you gave them, they're entitled to it. So the time frame they give you to pay them, that you give them to pay it back, you're never going to see it. That's never on time. And pretty much, uh, you know, I ice those fuckers out. I tell them that that's what banks are for. Uh, Sometimes I will give them a, a, a link to a TD bank or a Bank of America and tell them that this is what these businesses do for a living. They lend money. money and I would suggest that they're going to take a loan out for the bank. I'm not a fucking bank. I don't have it. Uh, uh, if it's a relative, I tell them my money is tied up in investments and the rest, whatever spillovers I have are for bills and to keep the lights on. I don't do that shit. Family meetings. I don't, I'm done. I don't want to meet your mother. I don't want to meet none of your parents. I don't want to meet your cousin. I don't want to meet anybody. Why? Because what benefit does that have for me? Now, yes, if I was trying to get to know you long term, yes, I would be more concerned of what your lineage is and what you come from. But guess what? I, I'm, you know, think with feminism, with gynocentrism, I have no interest in that. I have no interest of getting to know any of these creatures that have been indoctrinated into this brainwashing. Trust me, it does not matter who they are. All of them are the fucking same. If you checked out my last video, my, my uh, last video, I don't remember what the name was, but I, I spoke that the environment dictates what the majority of women are. And as you can see, this environment, this is a hookup culture, a slut culture. That means all the even the church girls have fell into the whirlpool. So I don't want to meet your family. Barbecues. I don't want any barbecues. I don't want to go to no Fourth of July cookouts. I don't want none, none of that shit. If I want a barbecue. In my MGTOW palace, I do have a grill outside. That's what I do outside on my own time. And I relax and I put some steaks, chicken, whatever it is on the grill. And I enjoy my solitude. Or if I chose to have anyone that's worth the company at that time that's beneficial to me, I will have them over and we can sit and we can grill and I'll do that at my house. I don't want to meet none of their parents. Also, I don't want to hear any of their problems. Why? Their problems do not benefit me. I put those bitches on ice. I don't want to hear about your problems. Um, I may not be super rude about it, but the moment they go to spilling off about problems, um, I've tr uh, if I'm on the phone with you with them, I tell them I have to call them back. I got an important phone call, and that call may come back the next day or two days later. But when I call back, the situation's got the conversation is not going to be about your problems anymore because your problems are not mine. I don't want to hear about that shit. Keep your problems to yourself. You talk to your friends. Ice them out. Another thing, I don't want to hear about your car problems. Women, when you know, they always have these car problems because they think cars are just turnkey and accelerate and gasoline. They don't understand that there's maintenance that comes with these things. You have to preventive maintenance, oil changes, tire rotations, balances, sometimes get the cars realigned when you get your tires changed, all those things. And what happened is when, you know, somehow, some way, when you meet these women and they have cars, just give it time. At some point, they're going to fuck their car up. 
I don't care what year it is, they're going to do something where they're going to look for the nearest man to come and speak to about their car problems and hoping that you come in and save the day. Sorry, wrong fucking guy. I'm not doing it. I don't want to hear that. I don't want to hear about broken items at your house. I don't want to hear about, you know, a uh, 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 furniture that you bought from Ikea. You don't know how to put it together. What I do, I ice them out. I direct them straight to Amazon or, you know, um, Thumbtack. Craigslist, there are plenty of people that are willing to do this job for a price, of course. And I don't really want to hear that. The first thing I do is I direct them to these sources and I don't, I don't, I, that's what off my back. I don't want anything to do about that with that. Holidays, I don't deal with that shit no more. I'm not into it. I understand what it's for. This is a reason for the narcissism of these women to you know, for a man, an excuse for a man to be obligated to spend money on them. Christmases, Valentine's Days, all these different holidays where, you you know, they, if you haven't met their family, they're going to try to go ahead and try to wedge you in to meet their family finally. All these little honey traps that they do, which at the end of the day, it's a trick. Anything these women do is a trick to find a way into to have access to your resources. At the end of the day, that is how they're wired. They can't help it. And guess what? I can't help them with that either. I don't want to hear about your future plans. I don't want to hear about what, you know, whether marriage or your work career, all of those things. I don't give a shit about none of that. Why? Those things do not benefit me. All right. The minute, the minute they get on that, if I try to change the subject, they stay on it. I end the conversation. Ice them out. I don't want to hear about it. That's not my problem. Your future is in your hands. It's your responsibility. I already know I'm not going to be a part of it anyway because I don't plan to stick around long. You deal with your future. You worry about that. You talk to your mommy and your friends and y'all work those things out. This is, this is what I mean. This is a male pushback. All those days of that shit there is over with me. It's been over for some years now. And a matter of fact, it's, been, it's worked very fine in my life. And I've had a lot of peace because of this. I don't want to hear their opinions on men. I really don't. They're going to come to you with that. They're going to give you opinions on their brothers. What they're going to do is they're going to find the nearest dysfunctional man. And they're going to want to talk about him just so they can see what your take is on it and for them to kind of screen you and see where you stand as far as misbehaving men, am I going to be some blue pill white knight and say, yes, your brother's wrong for what he did, or am I going to just hold, hold steady on it? What I do is I don't even indulge in the conversation. If it's about her brother, I let them know that, listen, I'm not a part of your family. You, you and your family need to have a kumbaya and you guys talk about that problem. I don't indulge with family people's issues. If they insist on my opinion, I tell them I don't have no, I don't, I don't have no reason for it because I don't know him personally. I ice them out. I put the bitch on ice. I don't want to hear nothing about that. And at the end of the day, the reason why I take these hard stances is because, fellas, think about it. Look at a hard stance that they're taking on you. Look at a hashtag Me Too movement. That was a very hard stance. That thing, that whole movement is destroying men's lives with them just wait, raving the wand of their mouth. That's it. And it's sad because now that the smoke is cleared and investigations have been done, a lot of these men that they threw under the bus have come out to be innocent. And at the same time, their careers were not able to recover. If these women, the ones who claim that they don't align with feminists, or they don't align with these crazy liberal ideologies. Where is the counter movement for hashtag me too? I want you to send in your answer and ask me to think about that. These track con women, you see them in comment sections, you see them on YouTube. Just like they were able to create a me too movement, where's the counter movement? If we have so many women that are saying, no, that this is not fair and it's not right to men, there is none. Esther, in Esther Villar's book, she said it herself, I'll paraphrase here, 
it's only women that could change the way the relationships are between men and women. Because they benefit so much, they have there's nothing in it for them to want to change it. So they're not. So at some point, men have to take a stance, a hard stance, like you see my list, or to push back on this. Now, you know, I feel like just doing this now. I was going to do another video on this. This was a book that I read. It's called A Sexploitation. And I was going to do a separate video. In this book, uh, I believe starts on, it's, yes, page uh, 65. It has a uh, the male to-do list. And really, after this reading, this is a very good book, by the way. I will probably make the book a thumbnail once this video is done. So you guys could just see it. Maybe if you want to check it out, just go to Amazon and, and get it. Uh, I would recommend a, 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 a hard copy of it. Uh, Cause I've already shared this book with two men and, you know, just let them hold it. They give it back to me and, you know, I keep it there, you know, for any guy that needs it. But I will have the, as a thumbnail, you guys could check it out, but just bear with me here. I'm just going to read his, the mail to do list. And this is the list that he recommends for most men. Immediately stop buying dr women drinks and picking up the check. Drink whores about everywhere. Not only does such behavior set the stage for a dishonest whore John relationship, but it also patronizes the imperious attitudes of women. Men, you have to truly understand how cold and calculated women are, how they count on you to be chumps, and how expert they are at manipulating you. If you can only see the gluted smile of triumph each time they know they've gotten away with, with it once again. Never forget, a woman always appraises dating and marriage as a business deal, and such an attitude does not deserve encouragement or support. When you go on a date, insist that your partner pay her fair share, even if sex is assured. This is true equal rights. You are taking the time and effort to make love to her, so why shouldn't she pay for it, just like you have to? Even though a woman will use every trick she knows to force you to back down, she will call you cheap or tell you that you have no class, or try to belittle you by implying that you don't make enough money, or simply pout like a child and not talk to you, it is imperative that you stand your ground. You should feel no hesitation or remorse at taking this vital step towards personal male freedom. After all, you have been conned into funding women's good time ever since you started dating. You've been taught that fulfilling your needs or her needs over yours is what gentlemen, quote, does. You have been brainwashed well by women whose interests you serve. It's, isn't it time you start getting paid back? Yes, you will be denied sex. There's no getting around this. The very second you expose a woman's con or refuse to bow down to her pussy power, she will fly into a rage. The absolute worst thing that can happen to a woman is the loss of her ability to control a man's pocketbook. So when you stop dancing at her tune, you will cut her off. But don't worry, this can only last for the short term because when women are forced to act like normal human beings, they will realize that they need men as much as men need them. And that is the road to relationships based on friendship and trust. Don't fall victim to female romance games. There's nothing wrong with a real romance at the proper place and time. But in the initial stages of courtship, a woman uses romance to control you and to convince herself that she's not a whore. Stand up and be a man. Put your foot down. It's time to start playing hardball. If you ever want to enjoy a positive relationship, refuse to be politically correct. Stop cowering in trumped up charges of sexual harassment. Fight back. Don't allow yourself to be emasculated by the abuse of pussy power, which is a true sexual harassment. The flip side of tyranny is servitude, and no real man kneels down like a cringing serf, catering to female whims. A real man serves nothing but independence, dignity, and pride. He does not flinch like a beaten dog when he sniffs the scent of a woman's vagina. Take no bullshit from women. Moodiness, bitchiness, brattiness, harping criticisms are not to be tolerated. When she has PMS or a headache or a bad day, 
You are supposed to bend over backwards to cater to her every nuance of her behavior as if the fate of the world depends upon it. But when you're, you're sick or in a lousy mood, you're a baby or you're unable to communicate. Many times women will nag and demand testing to see what kind of man you are. And if you give it to them, you will be judged as a weakling. This is a pathological behavior. If a woman treats you like this, tell her to clean up her act or get some professional help. If she doesn't return a phone call or breaks a date, she is again playing games, assuming she's interested in you. And the same reasoning applies. Start thinking for yourself for a change instead of organizing your life around the support of maintenance of women. When you underwrite a woman's life, you free her to pursue self-fulfilling interests, even if they are shallow. Shouldn't you give yourself the same chance? What sort of career path would you follow if you could escape the yoke of female greed, if you weren't forced to slave at a job you hate in order to earn enough to afford women? Make it a priority not to buy any products advertised with an anti-male bias. These commercials are appearing with a greater frequency, and corporations pander to the female dollar. They are unmittingly sexist. Example would include women drooling over shirtless hunks, small penis compensation for references, ladies' nights at bars and sporting events. There are no compensating men nights and insinuations of male stupidity and inability to make a commitment. Write or call these companies and explain to them that you won't buy any of their products until they stop offending stop the offending advertising. Beware of pathological damage those who have been let themselves be hurt by men that they will never allow anyone to get close to their emotions again. The truth is they have made a bad choice, usually for money, and blame all men for their own cap cap capabilities. Any woman who wants to be a friend first or who is a prof professional virgin is a patholog pa pathologically crippled in a dire need of therapy. These women have profound problems with their relationship with men and expert manipulators and ball busters. Stay away from them. Constantly monitor your thinking. Women are incredible, powerful lure, and it's very easy to slip into the mindset. Well, that's just the way things have always been when a pretty girl walks by. Hold your ground. Don't be a volunteer victim. Support and encourage true feminism which promotes personal growth and positive communication between the sexes. True feminists are open-minded women, more interested in egalitarian decisions than in shouting at you and pointing out your supposed faults. Never let women int intimidate or demean you for appreciating the female body. Lust is a very normal and healthy biological function. Nature has designed protuberant breasts and soft curves so that you will notice them. It is in a woman's best interest to teach you to think sex is dirty or sinful or that pornography is degrading to women. It most, it most certainly isn't. Participate fully in the coming backlash. You hear that, MGTOW? You hear that, it more? TFL guys, all the guys who's getting the fuck out of here, I will repeat again, participate fully in the coming backlash. The founders of our nation championed the slogan, no taxation without re representation. And you cannot any longer pay tribute to those who abuse and take advantage of you. By continuing to manipulate men while still reaping the rewards, rewards of equal rights, women have abrogated their rights to easy privilege. Misandry is rampant and insidious in American culture. culture. Women hold the whip hand, and a bloody whip it is. Even though men are living in a world which women have created, they don't have to end up as an obedient march of female abuse. The backlash more like a revolution is coming, and it's coming fast. Time for the liberation is here, and the time has come for all men to fight back, to reclaim their humanity, to assert their well-being, their earned well equality. For women, the price of this, parity will be having to pay for their own dinners, and having to offer sex gladly without compensation, but for both genders. The aftermath would be genuine intimacy and the possibility of true love. It would not be the case of mouse laying down with the cat with one eye open, but the birth of an entirely new attitude and the ushering into a new age of harmony and respect. End close. You guys feel free to check out that book. It is um, It's pretty much like an offshoot of The Manipulated Man by Esther Villar. 
but this is more this is a male version it's just an offshoot it's a real good read um I believe it's like 70 to 80 something print pages you guys can check that out if you want to um one more thing one more book before i go um the predatory female hands down to me was out of all the books i read was the best red pill book i've read um i'll probably do a review you know just like maybe a little reading like i did on this particular book on a predatory female that book there is brutal um i will warn you now the red pills in that book are very heavy if you haven't digested these uh these first stages of red pills and it's hard for you don't touch that book you guys take care um more videos to come thank you for being patient and helping me get this message out and men first and at some point, man, we, you know, you got to get tired of this shit. You got to get tired. Remember, we built this world. We built this society. Our gender are the ones who created the comforts that everybody could live in. Kids, women, men, seniors, animals, everything. We built this shit. And there's no way that we should be getting treated like second-class citizens in the house we built. You guys take care.